This video is sponsored by Linode. Use the link in the description to get a $100 60-day credit. Hello, everybody. This is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at Endless OS. This, I believe, is the very best Linux distribution for children. And there is a lot of different reasons for that, but the primary reason is all the included games, tools, and just things to help a child learn about Linux, about computers. And we are going to be uh, diving into some of those things in just a little bit. With that, this is an incredibly large download size. We see 17.15 gigabytes. So you're even going to need more than a 16 gig USB. You're going to have to have a 32 gigabyte USB to actually be able to install and use this on a computer. And the reason it's so large is right here, it says comes preloaded with over hundred apps and essential tools. So you'll have all you need, even if there is no internet access. Now, Endless OS is created and backed by the Endless OS Foundation. And one of their primary missions is to be able to connect people to the technology and the tools that they otherwise would not have access to. And you can see here on their actual foundation website, all the different uh, statistics and information about uh, specifically what they do, including if we go up here, even here in the United States, 12 to 15 million students uh, don't have effective access to the internet or devices for distance learning, which as we've learned over the last two years is essential to actually be able to uh, progress with your education. And if you do want to help this organization and learn more and all that, you could go over here to their endless key and this is how you donate to them. Basically, you are uh, purchasing these keys for other people. They are 128 gigabyte USB drives that will include this operating system to help them engage in safe digital learning environment with high quality learning and discovering resources that can be available offline. And with that, this video, like I said in the beginning, is sponsored by Linode. They are the largest independent cloud service provider out there. And sometimes people ask me, what do I mean by independent? And I mean that they don't have a giant, huge tech conglomerate company overseeing them. So something like Google, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, they are their own. Linode is the parent company, so you won't have any tech giants involved. Now, Linode, basically anything that you'd want a Linux server for, they're going to be fantastic. They have a whole bunch of easy one-click installs, so you could go ahead and deploy uh, web services, game servers, Nextcloud instances, really whatever you need. And I mean, you might as well go ahead and try it out, because if you use the link in the description, you get that $100 credit for 60 days, so you could go ahead and play around with it. So with that, I already went ahead and actually installed this, and it was probably one of the easiest installation processes. Uh, when you first boot up, you see the option to either boot into the live image or install it. When you do decide to install it, you pick what you actually want to install. For the ISO I burned, there is only the one available option. And then you go ahead and select the disk you're going to format and install this on. And after that, that's really about it. Once you reboot your system, you're into that standard GNOME setup screen where you give it your uh, language, your keyboard, your name. The, the one unique thing about this is it doesn't uh, require you to make a password by default. You actually have to select a box and then enable a password. I do kind of see why this makes sense, but compared to any other Linux distributions I've installed, this was a uh, rather unique. All right, and here we are in the system and the first impression I have, it does remind me a lot of Chrome OS and how that is laid out by default with the bottom taskbar and all the icons in the middle. But if we actually go ahead and check out some of these, first, this button right here isn't like an app launcher. This is to show all the open apps. We have our App Center hack, which we're going to dive into that in just a sec. It ships with Chromium and, of course, GNOME files right here. Going to close this out and let's check out some of these applications. So uh, we're going to dive into hack in just a sec. We have Chromium, so standard Chromium web browser. If we go ahead and open it up, this is a moderately lightweight install. They do include Adblock, and I'm not sure what this tab is doing, so let's close this out. Uh, files, videos, a lot of the typical GNOME stuff. Right here, system. Let's go ahead and open this up and check this out. Kernel, clock, and scheduler. So I think this is a learning tool to actually learn about Linux, so that is super cool. Let's, let's go up here to Window Manager, for example. So Saniel is telling us the Window Manager is exactly what it sounds like when it an operating system uses windows to display information. The window manager handles how it relates. So yeah, this is a learning tool, has cool characters, and it goes over specifically what these elements are. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out for now. So uh, we have a sidetrack here. Let's go ahead and open that up. So I think this is a game. 
So E's to go forward, space bars to jump. Okay, level complete, and it probably gets more complicated from there. Now, next we have a couple different folders. I'm gonna skip play for now under Create. It looks like we have Audacity, a video editor, photo editor. We have GIMP, Eekscape, Blender, Tux, Paint. So a lot of different creative tools are pre-installed. Under Work, we have the entire LibreOffice suite. Under Coding Education, we have a lot of cool things, HTML5 tutorials, CSS tutorials. So if I wanted to learn HTML, I would just open this up open up HTML tutorials and I could go ahead and let's go to the basics, uh, learn about mark sheets. And here's just a text kind of tutorial of exactly what's going on. So let's say we wanted to learn about the uh, HTML block and line, we could bring this up and get a good descriptor and a lot of good examples of exactly what this is. Under utilities, we have a bunch of standard GNOME utilities that you'd expect. We have a whole encyclopedia here. So if I search something up like computer, computer, and then I can learn exactly what a computer is. So close this out. After that, we have my budget. We have a resume builder, how to cooking, sanitation, healthy teeth. Pretty sure this is just a whole bunch of different like generic tutorials and guides on things. So like arts and entertainment. Let's say we wanted to learn how to draw. Let's learn how to draw. And it gives us uh, a good step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this. It looks like it's pulling articles from a WikiHow. So it's a basically an offline generic version of WikiHow. So like Dance Salsa, for example. Yeah, that's what this is. That's pretty cool though. So it does kind of give you just, just a little taste of the internet and an offline uh, capability. Uh, cooking, it's probably gonna be the same general situation. Let's uh, look at recipes here. Vegan French onion dip. Um, yeah, so it gives you all the steps, gives you pictures. So this is where those, uh, one of the reasons why it's 18 gigabytes, or at least close to 18 gigabytes. Uh, if we go over to uh, sanitation here, water supply and treatment, waste, so just another learning tool about that category. Uh, healthy teeth, which again is just another learning tool we can learn about uh, dental procedures, which again, at least based on the uh, artwork, this is probably uh, some wiki how stuff again. So uh, preparing to getting braces removed and yep, wiki how. So let's close that out. Then we have health, myth, and legends. We have an app center. Travel, Wikiart, Animals, Biology, uh, Science, Snacks. Let's see what that is. So it looks like just a bunch of different experiments. Let's go to Earth Sciences. I'm actually getting a degree in the Earth Sciences, basically. So yeah, just really easy to follow instructions on how to do some of these uh, uh, scientific experiments. Uh, this math one here, let's see what this is. So it's still following the same format as everything else we're looking at. Uh, we could learn basic algebra here, which I should probably <laughs> freshen myself up on. So yeah, eh, pretty cool stuff. So that's some of the unique things that are included. Uh, if I go over and check out some of the stuff that we're used to, like let's go into the App Center, for example. This is known, but you can see it's a uh, customized and modified to meet kind of what they're going for. And the checks mean we actually have a lot of this thing, a lot of this stuff pre-included, like Spotify is not included, Google Chrome. We have Chromium, but not Chrome. That's not included. Uh, but yeah, typical GNOME stuff. Under play, we can see what kind of games they have. This is a really cool game, Aqueducts. And they have a lot more. And a lot of like school-friendly games like Missile Math, Tux Math, and other things. Um, now let, let's check out this right here. This is called hack. This is what I was uh, I was uh, Testing this out a little bit earlier and this is pretty cool This is like that other thing that we are in where we have a uh, Riley web Faber maker Estelle art uh, games and Operating system. Let's see what he has to say. This is the operating system clubhouse that looks like these are like levels of difficulty of things to do so learning how to use Linux basically Let's, let's go with this first one. Let it snow. Is OS hacking at its finest? Uh, spectacular effects on your desktop. Learn about GNOME shell extensions, CSS, and emojis. So if we played this, for example, it says, okay, to make it snow, we need to install a GNOME extension. Let's go ahead and proceed. Shell extensions are teeny programs that add something special to your desktop. There are a lot of different extensions you can choose from and they are here. Fortunately, they already have it ready to go. So now it's gonna tell us to install it. Let's go ahead and install it. Okay, now that the Snow extension is installed, we need to enable it to do that. We need to install a little app that lets us manage it. 
which it opened up the uh, GNOME store and this is extensions and it already <laughs> it already installed it for us. There it is, it's automatically taking us to it. I'm not really doing anything. Check the desktop and go to the extensions app and launch it. So let's go ahead and do that. There it is, this application shows extensions. You can enable or disable each one by using the switch. And while we're already in here real quick, you can see there a desktop. We have the endless desktop, the desktop panel, and some of the other stuff they want, their watermark. So you can get rid of those if you'd like to. Uh, so let's go next. Look for the snow extension and click the switch to the right to enable it. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, congratulations, you've enabled the extension. Now look at your panel and you should see the snow icon. So right here is the snow icon. Click on the snow icon and hit let it snow. So let's enable, let it snow. And will you look at that, it's snowing. If you want to turn it off, just click the button again and disable it. So let's go next. Okay, now that you enjoyed that, how about hacking the extension? Let's go back to the extension app. Okay, so let's go ahead and I think this is the button right here that they're talking about. So it flips it to the hack toolbox. Okay, so let's go next. Great, here's the toolbox, the extension app. Play around with the controls to change how it snows. Let's try changing the snowflakes to a cat emoji. Okay, next. So you can change the actual code of the toolbox. I think it's already figured out the extension uses emoji and snowflakes, but did you know you can also use a list of emojis for the snowflakes and not a single one? So that's the uh, my flakes equals, and then here are all the flakes. So now it's wanting me to go to uh, Emojipedia and copy that cat emoji. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the cat <laughs> and paste that in there. I'm gonna do like two cats. And then let's go ahead and grab this uh, cat face here. So give that a copy and paste that in there. Beautiful. Uh, so we'll go next. And there's an easier way to look for emojis on your system. Try clicking on the text editor and then pressing control plus dot on GNOME system. So control dot will bring up the emojis and smileys. Beautiful. Is it bad I didn't actually know that? Okay, so now it wants me to go to the uh, styles over here on the left side of the toolbox. And here we have the uh, font sizes for the snowflakes, the text shadows and all that. And it says the snow is defined using CSS. So we can go ahead and edit this if we'd like to. It talks about the three classes that we have to generate the snowflakes and we could go ahead and change the font size if we'd like to. So let's change this one to like five and this one to 50, just so it's kind of dramatic. And it says we could play with colors. I'm gonna skip that for now. I'm gonna skip the colors. And it's cool here too. It says uh, that they're cool, huh? They're powerful, but that means you have to be careful on which ones you install because it could really mess up your system. <laughs> be careful, but have fun. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so just for giggles, let's go ahead back out of here. Uh, go back to extensions and let's see if my, we get those uh, cat emojis. So we do. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so that's cool. And if I close this out, you can see I could play it again. This is basically done. And well, we're good to go. So that is Endless OS. For me, I know as soon as my children have the uh, enough fine motor skills to use a keyboard, I'm going to be giving them some, uh, some cheaper ThinkPads with this installed on it. That would be definitely beneficial to them, in my opinion. Uh, with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to download this, try it out, maybe install it on the computer. There will be links below to both the download for the operating system, a link to learn more about the foundation, and donate to them if you do like what they're doing here. Again, thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. Thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are truly awesome. Um, with that, if you're interested in other videos and stuff, I'll link to something if you hit the I somewhere check it out by now you'll see something on the screen you might as well click it uh yeah have a beautiful day and goodbye